Welcome back to the KDPG Sunday edition as we remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 50 years after his death. Joining us now is a woman who is committed to helping revitalize Pittsburgh's Hill District. Marimba Malines is president and CEO of the Hill Community Development Corporation. And back with us is City Councilman Daniel Lavelle, whose district includes the Hill District. So what's happening in the Hill, Ms. Malines, in terms of economic development today? Well, there is a lot happening in the Hill District. Of course, over the next 10 years, we can expect over a billion dollars worth of development happening in the Hill District. When you talk about the Lower Hill District, which is at a minimum of $500 million development, you talk about the Center Avenue Corridor, you talk about Heron Avenue, uh, the transformation of the Bedford Dwellings community, uh, there is considerable development happening. Uh, so we are very excited. The residents of the Hill District remain engaged and active. Um, and, you know, I feel very fortunate to be able to serve on their behalf because they are such a passionate group of residents. Highest profile project would be the former Civic Arena site, right? I'd say, yes, that's one of the most, uh, you know, highly anticipated projects, one of the most difficult projects as well. Um, and, you know, I think it's not just limited to the Hill District, but I think our region really wants to see that project happen in a way that um, repairs uh, the Hill District and also, uh, you know, thrust our, our region into the future. There's a lot of opportunity um, there that uh, it, with, with intentional planning, design and development uh, become, become, become a national jewel. It is such a strategic site, Councilman LeBeau, yes. isn't it? You know, linking, potentially linking, hopefully linking the Hill District once again with downtown, reintegrating it. Uh, Ms. Malines called it a difficult project. Do you agree? It is a difficult project for numerous reasons, um, but I think one of the interesting things is as we sort of reflect on Dr. King's legacy and towards the end of his career, the Poor People's Campaign, and one of his positions was to be able to use very sort of meaningful and compassionate public policy to address that is what I believe we've attempted to do with the Lower Hill redevelopment by working on the community benefits agreement and putting other policies in place that say this minimum of $500 million development must, to be, must be towards the economic benefit and redevelopment of the Middle and Upper Hill District. So even such, such things as creating a special tax district where we say the, all the tax revenues generated from this site have to go back into redeveloping the middle and upper hill district. So it needs to be done in a way that doesn't simply isolate the rest of the community, mm -hmm. but both from a physical standpoint, helps reconnect the hill district back downtown, but more importantly, from an economic standpoint, help rebuild the people of the community. Another concept that's closely uh, intertwined with the lower hill, the arena redevelopment, um, is this idea of a cultural corridor, mm -hmm. uh, returning the hill to becoming a cultural corridor, or at least having one. Uh, how far do you think the hill is from having that, and how would you assess um, you know, residents in terms of getting that? Well, I would say that um, residents have been ready <laughs> for a long time, uh, and I'm, I'm very proud of the residents of our community because we have toiled over many years now to come up with a vision and a plan for our community, not just a vision document, but a plan that's based on market realities, uh, commercial realities, and, and so we've done that work as a community and we finished that in 2015. The community's plan was recognized by American Institute of Architects um, Pittsburgh chapter as one of the best architectural products of uh, 2016 or in 2016 and so so our community is really ready to be transformed. Um, right now we're working on increasing our um, you know our relationship and um, the work of the technical work of government and also we need additional capital from philanthropy and so I think that if we can pull all of those pieces together um, when we talk about again the legacy of uh, Dr. King and advocacy around fair housing and zoning there is a lot of uh, inclusionary zoning uh, to help us to promote the redevelopment of our neighborhood that needs to be done we can't do it as a com community alone, it has to be done in partnership with city. It has to be done in partnership with philanthropy. And, and so, you know, as the owners of the New Granada Theater, we are actually under construction for the first phase, and that will be uh, done in July of this year uh, to be able to go and celebrate at least that initial stage. And it's f just 1,500 square feet of space that will be community space, but we're excited that that first stage is getting completed. The New Granada Theater, that's a place that it resonates with the echoes of, of legends, uh, right? Yeah. Duke Ellington, yep. um, Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how, do, how do each of you see the future of that facility? 
What's, what will be happening there in five years? Right. So uh, in five years, what we expect is that the third floor will be occupied um, uh, by an institutional partner, um, which I'm not at liberty to talk about at this point, but an institutional partner that understands the programmatic desires of our community, um, that we uh, want to build and continue to build on the African-American cultural legacy of the Hill District. You're talking about something educational? Yes. Educational, component? educational okay. and communal. Not just limited to that, but also, you know, really tapping into science, technology, engineering, arts, math, um, and media. Those things have resonated with the community. And also, we have a lot of small business and entrepreneurial programming in the Hill District. So, partnering with agencies and organizations that are promoting entrepreneurship in the community. That's just one floor. The others are um, perhaps cu cultural and performance space, and then, of course, commercial space forget about New Granada is that it is a very large facility. It's 40,000 square feet. So it's not limited to just a cultural space. It will be a mixed use space, including culture, arts, and commercial. How important could that be for a neighborhood? It's critical. Um, the New Granada is viewed as one of the most important redevelopments of our entire community. Um, when I f ran for office the first time, the grocery store was sort of the most requested. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a redevelopment project, the New Granada is probably the most critical and will help tie in the future redevelopment of the Lower Hill District to the community, which is also one of the challenges. I do believe the Hill District is in many ways very poised to become a very unique place once again, where people will want to come for a unique set of culture that they can't really receive anywhere. The critical part to that is making sure that the Lower Hill and its redevelopment doesn't become anywhere USA, but is able to tie into the cultural legacy of the Hill District community and that becomes something very organic and is tied into the New Granada is tied into the August Wilson home, is tied into some other projects that are also the CDC has underway on Center Avenue that are focused on, on artistic lofts and other shared space. Um, so I think that's the challenge that we have, but I think it is doable. Now, you know, looking back a half century ago, uh, you know, in, in essence of Dr. King, there were a lot of young activists, there were a lot of community activists before that time from all strategies and all walks of life. I want to know in the Hill District now, how locked in are the residents of the Hill District in moving this forward? Oh, we, we have very strong consensus within our community on its future. Um, in 2011, the community came together. Councilman Lavelle served as the uh, manager of our uh, community planning effort. Uh, and we had philanthropy at the table. We had um, government agencies at the table, community residents. And so, um, so we established what we call the Greater Hill District Master Plan back in 2011. And then in 2015, we completed the implementation plan for the Center Avenue Commercial Core. So the community is on the same, same page. I mean, you know, no community is a monolith, and people have varying you know, ideas about certain things, but as a whole, I say the community, the Hill District is probably one of the best organized communities in Pittsburgh. You know, you've got uh, downtown on one side, University of Pittsburgh on the other. I mean, it's almost incredible. The strategic location of the Hill District is almost incredible. I'm wondering if, uh, do you ever look at what's happened in, say, East Liberty? Um, you look at the impact of Home Depot, Whole Foods going in, and the gentrification that's happened there. And, does any of that encourage you or maybe worry you about what could happen in the Hill? Both. It is both worrisome if we're not intentional about ensuring that those institutional partners, that those new developments are also working in collaboration with the community residents. Um, my goal since day one has always been the redevelopment should help lift the lives of the people who are already living here. So as University of Pittsburgh expands, as Duquesne University expands, as new businesses come into the Lower Hill District, what are we doing to ensuring job opportunities? What are we doing to ensuring that the commercial space that will go into Center Avenue and the Lower Hill District is done so in a meaningful way that allow for local Hill District businesses to open up there and help them flourish? Again, this is an economic shift um, that I don't believe was the focus of East Liberty um, and that it can be a lesson learned on how to ensure that we redevelop this but redevelop it in the manner in which those who are already living here and who have suffered the hard times of the last 50 years 
actually benefit from that development. I, I, you hear the same thing from people in Hazelwood as they look to what's going to happen yeah. with the Hazelwood Green, formerly the Almano site, how it's going to benefit the people who have been there. Mm -hmm. uh, for years and years, the struggle was to get a grocery store yes. in the Hill District. You have a shop and save now on Center Avenue. I mean, it, it seems like you can't really have a community, have a neighborhood without something as basic mm -hmm. as, a, you know, a church, mm -hmm. a bank, a grocery store. Mm -hmm. have, has that lived up to its potential? And I think the grocery store is still trying to find its way in the Hill District. Um, there's been lots of, you know, community conversation about how to make sure that it is serving the residents that are there, maybe tapping into some of the niche needs of the neighborhood as opposed to just being kind of a general market. Um, but, you know, certainly it's been an asset to our community. Um, Rand Corporation has done a study that shows that by locating the grocery store there, there has been an uptick in wellness and health. And so that's a, that's a positive benefit uh, that, you know, has been brought to our community as a result. All right, we're going to have to uh, wrap it up. Thank you both so much. Thank we'll you. take a break. Back with a final thought in just a moment.